Yeah, talking good and stuff. Um, so I spoke, uh, are we going here, I guess? Um, I spoke at X-World uh, three years ago and that was the first time I spoke publicly at any event and I was absolutely awful um, and I've gotten slightly better. Um, and so I thought I'd just give some advice of what I've kind of found along the way. Um, some of this advice was uh, given to me by a stand-up comedian. I think that was the best advice I've gotten so far. Um, and where was I? But yeah, anyway, the first time I tried, I was terrible. I, my mouth was so dry. Uh, I was freaking out. Um, I couldn't say anything. Um, one of the things uh, this stand-up told me to do was to look around the audience and, you know, you, you always hear that thing of, like, imagine them in their underwear. That is, like, so weird and creepy. Do not do that. <laughs> I don't know how you could possibly focus on what the hell you were trying to say when you're staring at Tony right now. Um, the other thing to do, though, so, so, yeah, what the stand-up said was um, to look for allies in any room. Uh, you're going to have allies in the audience. People don't want you to fail when you're up on stage. They actually do want to hear what, you th what you've got to say, and they're interested in it. So you just kind of look around the room. You find, of course, there are some people like John on his bloody laptop, but there are a majority of the people who are kind of engaged and listening. And so you find those kind of allies who are in the, in the audience who are giving you a smile, and you focus on them, and you just talk to them just for a minute or two until you feel a bit more confident confident and then you move on to the next ally. You find them in the... No, not Cameron. Uh, you just find those people that will help you uh, speak. Uh, and, and it's been the best advice I've ever, I've ever been given about that kind of... Uh, getting past that, that anxiety. Um, also, just accept that you're going to be nervous as hell. Um, that's fine. You'll get through it. Just remember to breathe. I use a water bottle as a prop when I'm talking. It just gives me something to focus on. Um, they gave me a microphone, so now I'm doing it with that instead. Um, but yeah, just keep yourself hydrated. Breathe. Slow down. Obviously, I'm talking very fast right now because it's five minutes. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, you'll be fine. Um, that idea of be yourself, I think that's bullshit. Um, <laughs> I'm an absolute nervous wreck uh, in real life, um, and I do have a bit of a potty mouth. I'm not that kind of person when I'm up on stage. I try to be a little bit different, and it also kind of, you know, my voice actually even kind of changes. Uh, it just reminds me to stay in the kind of presentation mode, um, and it helps me at least focus on what I'm supposed to say. Um, I think tell a story. That's the best advice as well. I try to tell a story with a beginning, middle, and end, um, and that allows me to write the presentation a little bit easier. I find it's an easier way to kind of figure out where I'm going to go for those 30, 40 minutes. Um, and it also stick to the tone of whatever the story is you're telling. So uh, in my, you know, obviously I decided a couple of days ago that I would focus on my slides all just being pictures from movies. Uh, and that was the, the hook I got to kind of figure out how I was going to tell my story. At one point I had um, a a screen of the Cylons from Battlestar Galactica who were representing uh, people, consultants who come in and restructure organisations. Um, I thought it was a good joke, but it was not really reflecting the tone of the rest of the, of the story, so it got cut. Um, one other thing I really, really like, uh, um, what's his name, George Miller from uh, Mad Max, director of Mad Max. When he cut Mad Max, he cut all of those amazing uh, adventure scenes uh, without any audio at all. And then once he felt that they were dynamic enough and interesting enough without audio, then he added it in as, as the kind of, you know, sprinkling on top. Uh, I do the same thing in terms of my presentations. I write everything as a story with just the text. And then once I've figured out the way I'm telling the story, then I'll go in and add the slides. And the slides are just there. As you can see, there's rarely, you know, bits and things to look at on my slides. It's just there to remind me what I'm supposed to say next. Uh, that's the way I like to do it. Uh, I've got 58 seconds. Okay. Um, bah, 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 bah. Another, another great film quote, as I said, I studied film. Um, John Ford, who wrote, uh, sorry, directed The Searchers and a bunch of other, one of the most celebrated directors of all time, but does hilarious interviews uh, where he gives no information about his genius. And at one point um, in an interview they said, how do, you make, how do you make a great film? What's the secret to making a great film? And he said, three good scenes, no bad ones. And that was, that was his entire advice. And I think that's great as well. 
Focus, be really, really simple on the story you want to tell. Focus on three really good points that you want to say, and then make sure most of the other stuff is not that great. Uh, sorry, it's not that bad. Um, and <laughs> understand that you'll make mistakes and they're not a big deal. The end. Thank <laughs> you.